In this video, I want to talk about the benefits of taking a log of the dependent variable opposed to just running a regression in levels. So the first of these benefits is if I take the log of my dependent variable and I leave my independent variables in non-logged form, then I have a model which looks something like this. So I have log y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1i plus beta 2 times x2i all the way through to xp or beta p rather times xpi. So what's one of the benefits of doing this? Well you can actually see it if I then take the inverse of the log which is the exponential function I can then re-express this model in terms of exponent. So I can write this model as yi is equal to e to the power alpha times e to the power beta 1 times x1i times e to the beta 2 times x2i, etc. And you can see that essentially by going from, well, by looking at our model in this form, we are allowing for a very non-linear and therefore quite general relationship between our variables. And often a linear model just doesn't cut it. So having this multiplicative form as we do here often is a much better way of modeling the dependent variable than just using a linear model. So that's one particular benefit. Another benefit is if I take the log of the dependent variable and I also take the log of the independent variables, so I have a model which looks something like this, log y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times log x1i plus beta 2 times log of x2i all the way through to beta p times log of xpi, then these coefficients here on the individual log terms actually have immediately an economic interpretation. They are the elasticities of that particular variable or, or rather of the dependent variable with respect to that particular variable. So that's beneficial because elasticities in general are better to deal with than just these sort of level terms because that allows us to compare disparate markets and disparate situations. Notice also that if I was to, like I did for the previous model, invert this, I would have a model which looks something like yi is equal to x1i to the power beta 1 times x2i to the power beta 2, etc. So again, we have got some sort of complicated multiplicative model here implied by estimating a model like this. And often this is actually a much more realistic way of modeling situations than just using a model which is linear in all your parameters. Okay, the third benefit of taking the log of the dependent variable is a little bit of a salient one, and it's a, a fact that's not well recognized. Often it's the case that we have a dependent variable, which is something like sales, perhaps, or perhaps it's wages, and implicit with these types of variable is the fact that these are always greater than or equal to zero. There is no way for sales to be negative or for wages to be negative, in most normal economies that is anyway. And technically when we actually deal with a model which has a limited dependent variable like this, then in theory we should be using some sort of limited dependent variable method to deal with it rather than just running OLS. In practice, it often doesn't make that much difference, but for theoretical soundness, by taking the log of the dependent variable, the log of the dependent variable satisfies quite different properties to y. Essentially, the log of the dependent variable has a maximum value which is plus infinity, and it has a minimum value which is minus infinity. So our dependent variable now, if we're running a model which has got log yi as a dependent variable, is no longer a limited dependent variable model. So theoretically, that is a better situation than dealing with a limited dependent variable. The fourth situation is to do with heteroscedasticity. And the idea here is that if we have a model which has heteroscedasticity, so we have a model which perhaps looks something like this, so I have some yi and some xi, which look something like this. So I'm getting a higher variance in yi as xi is increasing. So that's my xi, that's my yi. And in that will be reflected in my sort of distance of my points away from my fitted line. Well, essentially what the log transform does is 
it suppresses variation because it, the log function itself has a decreasing marginal returns to xi. So by actually taking a log of my dependent variable and often taking the log of my independent variable, then you can actually transform to situations which practically you've actually got rid of this heteroisk elasticity because it's just been suppressed so much by the log function. So perhaps your fitted model looks something like that now. And perhaps there's still a bit of heteroscedasticity, but practically it's not no longer an issue. So taking the log of dependent variables and independent variables can be a good idea because it can reduce heteroscedasticity. The last reason for taking the log of a dependent variable is because of the fact that by taking the log of the dependent variable, we actually make our data more normal or technically make the error more normal. And the way in which this works is similar to the example with heteroisk elasticity. So assume that we have an error which looks something like this. So we have a positively skewed error distribution. By taking the log, we are suppressing each of these variations. So essentially, we're making our distribution more symmetric. So perhaps when we're taking the log of the dependent variable, it might look something more like that. It will still have a bit of positive skew but we have made our data much more normal than it was previously. And as we know from our other discussions, it is much better to deal with normal errors than it is to deal with non-normal errors for inference purposes.